Hello, uh, welcome back to the Queen City Guitar Shop. Um, so we are in the middle of this little mini series on saw maintenance, specifically like Western style saw maintenance. Um, I have been making a laminated tabletop um, for a dining room table that I am currently working on, and that has me doing a lot of rip sawing and thinking about saws a lot. So. If you saw my last video, it was on a really basic, um, sort of my really basic sharpening technique. And in the future, probably in January, I'm gonna try and put out a video um, about retoothing a Western saw. So today we're gonna be working on um, what I would consider like a mid-level maintenance technique, um, which is basically just a more in-depth sharpening. Uh, it's gonna be actually truing all of the teeth tips so that they are perfectly in line. If uh, you watched the video that I posted last week, you know I talked about how it's important for all of the teeth to be in line with each other for an efficient cut. And the techniques that I do in my basic sharpening to try and maintain that. But eventually that's gonna break down and you're gonna end up with uneven saw teeth and you're gonna have to go back and actually um, true up that plane of the teeth so that they are actually in line. Um, some people will do this every time that they sharpen a saw. I personally don't. Um, there's a couple reasons. I learned to sharpen rip saws basically at the same time that I learned to sharpen chain saws. And I sort of carry the same thoughts with me into the rip saw from that world. And one of those is going to be that I sharpen really often. Um, I don't want to wait until the saw is screaming at me that it's dull. Um, I, I don't want to wait until the saw is dull. I want to catch it while the teeth are still, you know, maybe marginal but still pretty sharp. Um, and that allows me to remove less material when I'm sharpening, and less material means that the teeth are dropping less and there's less chance for them to become uneven. Um, and the second thing that comes directly over from sharpening chainsaws is that I'm trying to be extremely even, not only in the technique that I detailed in the last video, am I focused on doing the exact same work, you know, the same number of passes on every teeth, on every tooth. Um, I'm also really focused on making sure that all of my file strokes are identical as I work down the plate. And so I'm going to be, hopefully, cutting the same amount of material off of every tooth and they're going to be dropping at the same time. Um, I think I can realistically get away with doing that three or four times before I need to go back and true up the edge of the saw plate. Uh, I'm not always very good at doing that. I could definitely be better. It's you know one of the joys of woodworking to learn the areas that you could improve on and then to improve on those. Um, and it's definitely time for this, for this saw. Uh, it's not too bad, but it's gotten to the point where it's noticeable that the saw is uneven, and I think it's always good to catch stuff before it becomes noticeable, because by the time it's become noticeable, you're having a large decrease in efficiency. Um, and just like with sharpening, where I want to catch the teeth before they become noticeably dull, it's good to catch the saw before it becomes noticeably uneven. Um, so, like I said, I should probably be aiming to do this maybe every three or four times. Uh, you might want to do it every time. You might feel like you can get away with doing it less often. Um, it's just going to depend on your technique and what feels best to you. So to get started on this, um, I'm going to first mark every tooth, at least on one side of the plate, uh, where it's set. The saw set is, of course, um, the teeth being like alternately set one side or the other. And this allows the saw to cut a larger kerf than the actual plate that it's on. Um, I tend to put a really minimal set in these teeth. Um, for the work that I'm doing with this table, for just ripping this cherry, it would make sense to put a larger set. Um, cause it, make the work faster and lessen the chances of the wood binding, you know, like clamping down on the saw and the saw binding in the cut. 
But since the work I'm normally doing with this is things like resawing tops or resawing things for guitars, I want to keep the set minimal because the larger set is going to make a larger kerf and it's going to be more wasted material. And the larger kerf is going to allow the saw itself to move in the kerf and that allows the saw to wander. And when I'm resawing like a top, I don't want the saw to wander in that line. It's easier for me to you know, wax the saw and maybe put in wedges um, to keep that kerf open and the saw moving smoothly than it would be to just have a wider kerf and more inaccuracy in the saw cut. Um, so I'm gonna maintain this a, a pretty minimal set. Um, and that means that it's already pretty difficult to see which direction each tooth is is leaned in, and when I actually file this down or true the edge, it's going to be even more difficult. So I want to know right now which direction the teeth are leaning in, because I'm not going to want to set them in the opposite direction. If a tooth is set this way, I don't want to set it this way the next time I, I do the saw set, because that's going to weaken the tooth and could potentially break the tooth, and I don't want broken teeth on my saw. So I'm going to mark those, and then we're going to get to just truing up this edge. And this is sort of a process reminiscent of um, doing fret work, like leveling frets and crowning frets. If you're here for like guitar content, this might help, uh, the analogy might help, it might make sense to you. It helps me to feel like I'm staying you know, on topic uh, with the general channel. So that's nice. But the basic idea is just like a fretboard, um, the frets you want on a level plane with each other, and the top of every fret to be in line, no high frets, no low frets. Um, we're gonna do the same thing with the teeth. And we're gonna accomplish that just with like a flat file. Um, I like just using a bastard mill file, and I've marked the flat side. Um, generally there's like a flat side, and then the other side is mostly flat, but will dip off a little bit. Um, I just use a straight edge to check it because I can't eyeball it myself. Um, and what you're going to want to do is to just run the file perpendicular to the saw plate across the saw um, until you have a flat on every tooth. And that is going to tell you, just like on frets, that those teeth are in line. You want to pay attention to the general topography of the saw. If I was working with like a dovetail saw, I would almost certainly be trying to get a totally flat saw plate. Um, and I would want to be checking it with a straight edge to make sure I'm maintaining that. With this particular saw, uh, the edge is actually what's called breasted. And so it's, it's got like a slight curve to it. And I'm going to want to maintain that curve. It's hard to see when you're looking at the saw straight on, but if I look at it, you know, down the teeth, I can see a, a very slight curve. Um, the other consideration to have is going to be for your particular saw, what the, the plate is actually doing. So this saw still has a really nice curve through, you know, the middle of the saw, the main portion of the saw is still really good. The tip, when it gets here, actually levels out a little bit. So I'm going to want to pay attention to that too, because I don't want to work the whole thing and we have a high set of teeth here, and then these are you know, lower, they're in line with this curve, but they're lower than these high teeth. So if I just work it across the whole way, what I'm gonna end up doing is just flattening out further this front section, and I don't wanna do that. So I'm gonna be working these down probably a little bit independently to try and bring them back into the general curve of the saw plate. Um, to maintain your file perpendicular, you can eyeball it if you feel good uh, and good enough to do that. You can also buy like a jig. Um, it's just a little tool that the file sits in and it holds on to either side of the saw and it will keep the file perpendicular, um, nice and square. If you don't want to buy something like that, um, you can just use a block of wood with you know a square edge. Just rest your file on there and use it against one side of the saw to maintain a square edge uh, on the saw plate where you're going to be establishing teeth, the teeth stops. So um, 
yeah, I'm gonna get started on that. And we'll be back when I've got flats on every one of these teeth, and then we'll go through the next steps. So, I'll see you in a few. Okay, so um, I've got the edge of the saw plate jointed up. It's, it's nice and flattened. Um, I've got flats on every tooth, and I have maintained the, the arc, um, the breasted profile of the saw. Um, so I'm ready to actually start evening these teeth out. So in the last video, we talked about cutting every tooth down an equal amount, you know, treating all of the tooth all of the teeth the same, um, same number of strokes, same um, file pressure, and and same length of stroke. And the idea behind that was to um, the idea behind that was that we were starting with something that was even, and as we sharpen all the teeth, we want to maintain that evenness as much as possible, and so. To that end, we're going to cut the same amount of material away from each tooth. Um, at this point, though, we are trying to true up an unevenness. And so we're starting from a place of unevenness. Um, now that we've jointed it, you know, you can see there'll be uh, large flats on some teeth, and that would be a tall tooth, and there'll be smaller flats on the tip of other teeth, and they're shorter. If we were to use the same procedure as the previous video, uh, we would essentially be preserving that unevenness because, again, that would be a procedure for trying to keep things the same. Um, we file every tooth the same amount and just keep going until the flats are gone. Then the short teeth are going to end up short and the tall teeth are going to end up tall. And we're going to be right back where we started. Instead, we are going to want to work all of these teeth across the saw plate to eliminate those uh, flat spots. We want just like the barest glimmer of them when we're done with this portion of, uh, of the procedure. Um, and that's going to mean cutting every tooth a little bit differently. So it's sort of like, again with like fret work, um, when you level and crown fret, frets, you know, you, you level the fret tops and you end up with, with flats on all the frets. And then you go back and from each side you file away a little bit just to bring that front top over and rounded and there's just like the barest glimmer of that flat top uh, and in that way you get smooth um, smooth frets that are all level and in plane with each other. Uh, we're going to do a similar thing with the saw teeth in that we are going to cut a little bit from the, around the flat spots because remember um, your saw file, of course, is, is triangular and it's going to fit into the gullet and it's going to cut, you know, it's going to want to cut both the back of one tooth and the front of the tooth behind it. So we're going to work down on the saw and we're going to bring these flat spots from either side in until there's just, just the faintest little bit of them left. Um, and the other thing we're going to pay attention to is that we want to keep the tooth size even and correct any, you know, do our best to correct any tooth size variation that's occurring. Um, so if I was to say have a real deep gullet um, and a flat spot and a shallow gullet, a small tooth and a flat spot and then a deep gullet, big tooth, I would probably want to work those two flat spots mostly from the smaller tooth to try and bring it you know, to try and size it up a little bit, so that gullet up a little bit, and even out those teeth. Um, so, all this is to say that I'm going to work pretty slowly across the saw plate. Um, I'm going to work the whole plate rather than like focusing on a single tooth at a time, single flat spot at a time, trying to get it, you know, just right. Because again, there's not, you know, individual teeth. It's a whole bunch of teeth working together to make the saw plate. Um, so I want to focus on the whole thing rather than like one individual tooth at a time getting everything perfect. 
because it's just going to work faster, um, work more accurately to treat the whole plate as a whole. Um, so yeah, I'm going to go slow, I'm going to work back and forth across until I've got all of these flats eliminated, you know, just like, I just want the barest hint of a flat left on each tooth tip. Um, if you go past on a few teeth, you know, say you overcut one over here and one over here and one over here, it's probably not a big deal and you should just leave them. Um, if you notice that clusters of them are doing a lot, it's also not a huge deal. You can just keep working the flats, trying to get them even, trying to work on your technique as you go across the saw. You'll be making some progress and then when you finish, you know, getting rid of the flats more or less, you can go back and joint the edge again and, and work it again and it'll be closer and it'll be easier and um, it'll be like a learning process as you get it closer. It might take a little longer, but it's not a big deal if you need to rejoint the edge and go over it again. Um, so I'm going to get started on this. Uh, the only other thing I have to mention is last time I was talking about just sticking a, you know, some putty on, on the end of the file and that works all right. Uh, it's also really easy and if you're doing a lot of filing, kind of better to take like a wood block and you just drill a hole in. I've got this oriented so that at the angle of the gullet um, of my teeth, it's more or less pointing like up. And then I can just hammer you know, the, the file into that hole and keep it more or less pointing up. Um, it doesn't have to be anything super accurate. It's just going to keep me from wobbling too much, which will keep the rake angle of all the teeth pretty close. Um, certainly like close enough for, for saw sharpening. So I'm going to get working on these teeth and when I'm done with that, I'll see you again. Alright, so I'm all done um, cutting these teeth down evenly. I've got all of them cut down uh, so that there's just the barest glimmer of a third facet on the tip of every tooth. Uh, and I've done my best to work across the saw plate, paying attention to the tooth size and shape and making everything even, um, not exacerbating any small unevenness that's present in the teeth. And so now we're on the final two steps of doing this saw sharpening. Um, the first is going to be to reset all the teeth. Um, you don't need to do this every time you sharpen a saw, but you know I will do this when I'm truing up the edge. Um, you're only going to be setting the top top bit of the tooth, so the more you cut down, the, the less set is going to be. It's good. Um, the less the set is going to be present still, so it's good every once in a while to just go ahead and reset the teeth on the saw. Um, the easiest way to do this accurately is just going to be to get a saw set. It's just like a pliers like these, and it'll allow you to dial in how much you want to push the, the tooth over. The set is again, of course, like alternating the teeth in one direction and the other down the saw plate to create a slightly larger kerf than the plate itself um, to keep the saw from binding. Um, this one is like a Somax number 250. I believe that it indicates in the instructions that um, the dial is to be turned you know, to the tooth per inch setting of the saw. There's like numbers on this dial from 4 to 12. So this would be a five tooth per inch saw, and they would suggest that I set it five tooth per inch on the dial. I think that's way more set than I want and not really necessary. Um, for this saw, I'm generally staying somewhere between 10 and 12. Um, I've got it basically at 11, which is a very, very minimal amount of set. Because again, I don't want a large curve on the saw. I don't want a lot of set on the saw. Um, but you could dial it into your liking, and it's basically like, you squeeze the plier handle and a large anvil comes out and grips the saw plate itself and then there's a smaller anvil 
that when you get to the end of that grip, it'll push out and that's actually going to push the tooth over. It's just going to push the top portion of the tooth over. Um, and the saw set's going to register on the saw on the teeth, just on this plate. Um, so you're just basically going to rest it on the teeth adjacent and center the second anvil on the tooth and squeeze it. Not super hard, you just want to give it a firm squeeze, you know, basically the same firm squeeze on every tooth. Um, I had marked all of my teeth on this side that were set in this direction. So, and this is going to push the teeth that way, so I'm going to go and do every tooth that I want to push this way, every unmarked tooth on this side of the saw, and I'll flip it and I'll do the rest of the teeth, and then that'll be it for doing the saw set. Uh, and I will forget about this for a while, because I'm not going to set this saw for a little while again. Um, at that point, it's just going to be one more step, and that's just going to be going back to the video I made previously and doing that procedure, which is to just try and evenly sharpen all of the teeth. They're all pretty even. Um, you know, the same amount of material needs to be removed from each of them. They're all level. So I'm probably only going to take one pass on each tooth, just enough to knock down this, this little tiny facet that I've left on each tooth. Um, and not to really introduce any unevenness. Um, and that'll leave us with a nice sharp chisel point on each tooth with no third facet. And then it'll be ready to start cutting with this saw. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it for today. Uh, I hope you liked the video. And if you did, please hit the like button. And if you're not already subscribed to my channel, consider subscribing. Um, both of those things help me to reach a wider audience, uh, which is great. And being subscribed to the channel will mean you get updates about future videos that I post, um, about guitar building and hand tool topics. And yeah, I'd encourage you to check out my website if you'd like to see some of my past work, or if you have an interest in learning more about guitar building, I have some options for more one-on-one -on -one instruction. Uh, go into a little more like specific detail of your interests. Um, and yeah, uh, like I said, I'll be out with the third installment of the saw series in January, um, which will be retoothing a saw. And I may or may not have another video in between these two on a like, guitar related topic, uh, but I almost certainly won't be back before 2020, 20, 2022. So I hope you're having a good wrap up to the year. Um, and yeah, thanks for watching. Uh, I'll see you next year.